For the moment, their priority was staying in Scotland's top division. Rob McLean's at Rugby Park. He said he'd freshen up this team and Bobby Williamson has done five changes to the Kilmarnock team beaten at Dundee last Saturday. Innes is suspended, Mitchell and Mahout dropped down to the bench, Kerr and Riley are left out altogether. Here's the reshaped lineup with Kevin McGowan and Martin Baker returning to the back four. Gary Holt is restored in a three-man midfield. Joint top scorers Paul Wright and Ali McCoyst get recalls to make it three up front. The third striker is Jerome Varai, who's made a quicker than expected recovery from injury. This is his first top team match at Rugby Park for five months. To score today, he'll have to beat the outstanding Andy Gorham, who even managed to be a star turn last weekend, as Motherwell went down 4-0 to Hearts. Michael Duisberg was injured in the pre-match warm-up, joining Sean Teal on the casualty list. Lee McCulloch and Simu Valakari are suspended. Tony Thomas drops out of the starting lineup. In come Steve Cragen, Rob Matai, Derek Adams and Pat Nevin. Mother will switch from a back three to a four with Cragen alongside Jamie McGowan in central defence. Matai and Adams join Mark Gower in midfield and Nevin will aim to supply strikers John Spencer and Don Goodman. The referee for Kilmarnock against Motherwell is Kevin Toner. Kilmarnock start the match. The defeat against Park last Saturday was their first loss in seven matches. They remain ahead of St Johnston in third place, but just by a point to fragile leads. They want to make that position a little bit safer as they try to secure European football next season. In from Goodman to Gower. Intercepted by Girard. Paul Wright. Jerome Varai is off and running. Up goes McMillan. And corner kick conceded. 40 seconds gone. And it was a good sprint from Varai. And a dangerous ball played to him by Paul Wright. Andy Gorham, the goalkeeper and the skipper. In again from Durant, headed away by Goodman. Gary Holt was in. Gower gets it clear for Motherwell. First time for me and Durant. Jimmy McGowan on the header. Cleared by Cregan. The right. All right, just missed the pass from Henry. Pass from Ian Durant. Henry showed a bit too much of the ball to Jed Brannan. Back from McCoy to Baker. The right. Won the header but couldn't hit the target. Good challenge here made by McMillan, which meant the header went wide. for Gower tackling the back was John Henry the whistle goes against him Goodman, Adams, Spencer McGowan waiting in the middle and from Brannan good delivery here's McGowan flag is up though for offside whipped in low and hard by Brannan Kilmarnock defence moved out and up went the flag. Deflected off Gower to Holt. Durant's pass to Paul Wright. Strong challenge from Steve Cragen. Disappointed though that the free kick's given against him here. Contenders here to strike it, Ian Durant and Paul Wright. 
Kevin McGowan. Ooh. Caught hold of it, certainly. It flew wide, but not far wide. This angle, I'm sure, will confirm. That was pretty close from McGowan. A couple of feet off target. Well-timed run by Jerome Varai, keeps himself onside. Getting the better of Stevie McMillan in his early stages. That's McPherson. It's a good ball in, McCormick flung himself at it. Harry Holt hesitated, and the tie robbed him. Good ball for Don Goodman. Jack Brannan. Nevin again. Getting to the byline. Good play from Nevin. Gallop. Not by McPherson. And the tie is shot. Dangerously close to striking the corner flag. A good play from Pat Nevin. This was good skill in a tight situation inside the area. The ball tightly under control. A dangerous delivery to the back post. Martin Baker. Ian Durant. McPherson joins the attack. Lovely ball in for John Henry. And good defending from Jamie McGowan. He scored three times in his last four games, John Henry, on his return to the Kilmarnock top team. He timed his run into the box well here. He wasn't picked up immediately. Across came McGowan. Durant's corner kick for McPherson. And Henry. Blocked by Adams. Baker to McCoist. Jeff Brown's clearance. Charged down by Henry. Bobby Williamson wants the European passport to be secured for Kilmarnock. They've enjoyed their recent experiences in playing in the European competitions and they want more. Came from Kevin McGowan. No takers inside the penalty area. A blatant foul by Mark Gower. In a dangerous situation against Jerome Verai. This wasn't a tough decision to take with Kevin Toner as Verai was hauled off the ball. In for me and Gerard! Absolutely superb! That looked as if it was about to nestle in the top corner. It was deflected, which made the save all the more remarkable. Durant's corner kick, finished from Andy Golan. Very much in charge, back from Baker. Durant again, looked in. Don Goodman couldn't get away, but Rai has it. again Gowers overrun it it was Paul Wright who got his head to Ian Durant's free kick then it came off McGowan and what a save from Gorham Gower held up by Goodman 
again, Don Goodman. Deflected off Lachlan. Good challenge in the middle by McGowan. Baker, Durant, Holt. The Rye wants it. Support Desmond Fraser. Steve McMillan came away with the ball. At the moment, supporters didn't care for the challenge. Good head flick from Don Goodman. Nevin has it. And now Jed Brannan. Evan finding Spencer. Spencer losing out to Durant's tackle. Going away. It's Gus McPherson's header. Goodman. Derek Adams. So close. Their first serious shot and goal, Motherwell. And it very nearly ended up in the back of the net. Gordon Marshall was rooted to the spot. There was nothing he could do about this. A quick turn and shot from Adams. And inches away. Neat touch from Vry. Releases is McCoyst. And Adam McCoyst has done himself a nasty. This match looks to be over, he's already indicating to the dugout, he's in trouble. Here's what happened to McCoyst. It went there, didn't it? Mitchell will be on as soon as he can get himself organised. He wasn't expecting this. Good header from John Spencer, well controlled. Evans flick from Mark Gower. Up in support, Jed Brannan. And deflected behind for a corner kick. Inside stoppage time at the end of the first half, two minutes to be added. That was McGowan's header, good move, Spencer. The mark survives. Jerome Verai trying to spark a counter attack. Away from Steve McMillan. In for Durant. Clever ball in to John Henry, cut out by Matai. But Motherwell were close here after McGowan's header down. Goodman got a touch and Spencer's effort blocked by Marshall. Good goalkeeping. A turning play from Don Goodman and it wins him the corner kick. Gowan into the box, Evans delivery, and spun off Gary Holt's head, and into the hands of Gordon Marshall. That's the end of the first half, and the big talking point, the goalkeeping of Andy Gorham yet again. The monarch was certainly close here after Ian Durant's free kick, and the deflected header from Paul Wright producing a save of international class from Andy Gorham the latest in the Gorham collection Motherwell might well have snatched the lead here the turn and the shot from Derek Adams whistling inches off target and then right at the end of the half from close in following the corner kick John Spencer denied at close range by Gordon Marshall half time at Rugby Park it's Kilmarnock nil Motherwell nil
It's Motherwell who restart the match. They've won only one of their last nine games. Uh, not yet mathematically safe from relegation problems. Derek Adams. Paul White's touch, but Jerome Verai won't catch it. Brandon playing it right back. Had expected to start midfield until the injury to Dusburg. they warm up. Nicely played for Nevin. Good run from Pat Nevin. Goodman available. Here's Don Goodman. Should have done better. Well set up. Good play from Nevin. Lovely change of pace to take him away from Jim Laughlin. And this looked to be on a plate for Goodman to score his first goal for Motherwell. But all he did was rustle the side netting. So much to admire about the build-up here. Good first time passing, then the surge into the box from Nevin. And the shot flew wide. Rob Matai, John Spencer. Tackled by Durant, looking for a free kick, not given. Gus McPherson's on the move. John Henry, Jerome Verai. In the blocking was McGowan. Here's Martin Baker. Still Martin Baker on the right foot. Got away. The opportunity opened up there for Baker. Looking for his first goal of the season. And this right foot effort was not far away. decision Don Goodman's header John Spencer and a penalty kick for the foul on Derek Adams Jim Laughlin shakes his head it was Goodman's header across the box then Spencer's header down and off the ball, down went Derek Adams, penalty kick. So Jed Brannan has the chance to give Mother with the lead. And does. Eight minutes into the second half, a chorus of booing around Bradley Park for the penalty decision. And this was the way that Brannan tucked the ball away from Gordon Marshall and Billy Davis couldn't bear to look. Gower plays it in beyond Spencer and Goodman. Person, Ian Durant, early ball in, and neither right nor Mitchell could get there. Corner kick given. Touched behind by Jed Brannan. And 
Mitchell's corner kick. Go, go. Goodman won it. Person. Paul Wright racing after the ball to get on with it. The rise layoff. Holt, Durant. Aimed at John Henry. And that was a header well won by Mark Gower. It was important because this flighted ball from Durant. Well, he's heading towards Henry. Durant's corner kick punched away by Gorham. Baker has it. And Baker again. Again. Still not Baker. Too high the shot. His team's one up, but he still wants better, Billy Davis. Mark Gower on loan from Tottenham. And again. Loose play though in the midfield. And we're getting the break of the ball. And Spencer finds Brunner. John Spencer controlled in his chest. Knocked over. Both players still grounded in the penalty area. And and the Gorham knocks the ball out of play so that both players can get some attention here. Controlled on the chest of John Spencer. The ball in from Jed Brannan. It was superb ability from John Spencer. And he was sent flying by Kevin McGowan. And that must have been a strong claim for a penalty kick. John Spencer hit the deck, holding the back of his head. And he's still clearly far from happy. John Spencer with a few well-chosen words in the direction of the referee after that. Ball into the corner for Gary Holt. Did well. Chased by Henry. Paul Wright. And Ali Mitchell. Superb reflexes again from Andy Gorham. Gilmarnock wondering what they have to do to find a way past. This looked as if it was a search for 1 1 from Ali Mitchell. Out went the left hand and deflected away from goal. He's in absolutely outstanding form, is Andy Gorham. Mitchell's first effort was blocked. The second, he thought, was net-bound. But it was that man, Gorham, in the way. Goodman's head flick. McPherson got that away just before Spencer arrived. Burke and McCutcheon trying to combine. Hammered clear by McMillan and offside. Ninety minutes played. Possession lost by Durant. Here he comes again. Nicholas intercepted, then lost it. Cregan can't get it properly cleared. Back in from McCutcheon. 
And comes Andy Gorham to claim it. And his mother will try to stay composed. Again, the flag up against Spencer. Lachlan's free kick. Foul against Jamie McGowan. Can they salvage a draw? Right at the end of the match. Andy Gorham has stood between them and a breakthrough so far. McGowan is there. And Durant as well. It's Kevin McGowan. Off Don Goodman. Holt got his boot in. McGowan again. The ball just won't come down for the shot. Another opportunity for Kilmarnock comes to nothing. And it was Jed Brannan who made an important challenge here as McGowan lined up the shot. Rugby Park and it's the Motherwell fans who have the smiles on their faces their team picks up an important three points away from home and they're now all but safe in the battle against relegation it was Jed Brannan's penalty which was the only goal of the game Motherwell move nine points clear of Dunfermline who play on Monday and all but safe now their place in the Premier League almost secured, but it's a big blow to Kilmarnock as they chase a place in European football and there are minds on a certain match against St. Johnson in two weeks' time, which may well decide who goes into Europe next season. Andy Gorham for Motherwell again, absolutely outstanding. Two fantastic saves, one in the first half from Paul Wright one from Ali Mitchell in the second. That and the penalty from Jed Brannan mean it's Kilmarnock nil, Motherwell one. No, it's, it's a fantastic performance. It's, it was a very uh, spirited performance from the players, considering the suspensions and injuries. Then we lost Michel Duisburg in the warm-up and I was beginning to wonder what was going on, but all credit to the lads, you know. All week we've been reading the papers about uh, the problems we have within the club and, you know, the lack of effort and spirit and so on. But I think we proved today to everyone that's exactly what we're all about. What's your post-match analysis then on what went wrong for Kilmarnock here today? Just never showed enough creativity, no imagination, and uh, that's disappointing. We knocked the ball about at times, but uh, as I said, we've done that last week as well, and we never created enough. If we don't create chances, strikers will not score goals. We were under a lot of pressure the last few weeks, and we've had a bad run. Particularly at home, we've been finding it difficult. We're playing pretty well away from home. Uh, just been unfortunate not being able to get results, but uh, this is when we really needed. Uh, I don't think we're mathematically safe, but uh, yeah, we're, we're very much relieved today. And it's turning two weeks' time against St Johnston into a bit of a decider for Europe almost. Well, we've got a big game next week, and uh, we've got to get that one out of the way first before we start concentrating St Johnston. But we knew it was going to be like that all the way to the end of the season. It's becoming a bit boring to speak about Andy Gordon week after week, but again, a couple of outstanding saves here. Yeah, he's, he's outstanding, isn't he? I, I thought uh, he wore that captain's armband with, with sheer pride today and, you know, he leads by example in the dressing room, he leads by example on the pitch and once again he's proved today that uh, he is definitely number one. And if he inspires the rest of the team by wearing the armband then he'll be wearing it permanently, I'd imagine. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely go and get my nice little suit made by the captain <laughs> in the back as well, no doubt, but as I say, his, his performance was outstanding. We've set standards this year and uh, it's been hard to maintain them. When uh, I mean, we drop those standards, it looks bad. Uh, we're expected to win our home games. I said it's been well over a year since the provincial clubs beat us here in the league, and uh, that's disappointing as that. But um, that's the way it goes. Uh, they get a break, they get a penalty. We never, we never got anything. So that's the way it goes.